Welcome back to 3Zen. Every now and then during the process of student training, a student would do something totally off the wall. You would never see it coming. Uh, got a couple examples here of that to uh, illustrate what I mean. The first one that I became aware of, um, it, it was not me flying the airplane, but um, this kid was on a check ride one morning and he comes back into the traffic pattern at uh, 300 knots, 1,500 feet above the ground. And at the normal point, he pitches out. Now he rolls into a 60 degree bank turn and we would do a 180 degree turn to uh, position ourselves for the, uh, for the final turn for a normal landing. Anyway, midway through, he's at 60 degrees of bank and 2G. Everything's looking normal, and all of a sudden, the check pilot sees the uh, gear handle come down. What in the hell? So this guy's in, he's in a 60-degree bank turn, and just about midway through the turn, and the gear handle comes down, and the gears start to come out. Well, he grabs the airplane, slaps the stick, or slaps the gear handle back up, but it's too late. He's, they've already over would the gear, oversped the gear. So anyway, he cleans it up, and... Um, sorts it out. I don't know if he did a breakout or whatever. But anyway, the kid flunked the check ride right there. Go figure. So they get down to the debriefing and the check pilot's looking at the kid. He says, why did you put the gear down at 260 knots uh, in halfway through the uh, pitch out? And the kid says, well, he says, the 240 knot interlock switch must have failed. <laughs> and this guy says, what? He says, yeah, he says, uh, normally, he says, what I do is when I'm doing my landings, I put my hand on the gear handle, and, and at 240 knots, he says, the gear comes down. He says, so this guy says, all right, kid, time out. So he goes back to his IP, and he says, do you have any idea what the hell this kid's talking about, a 240-knot uh, gear handle um, interlock switch? I've never heard anything like that. And the IP sheepishly looked at him and said, oh, crap. He says, you know, this kid had a propensity for putting the gear down early. So he says, what I would do is put my hand up under the gear handle and hold it there until we got below 240, and then he could put the gear down. Okay, that solves that one. The kid still flunked the check ride, and the IP got a little bit of residual training, too. On another case involving the gear... Tommy was flying with this student and very early in the program. And um, so they're coming up toward this kid's check ride, uh, maybe a ride or two before the check ride. And Tommy knew that this kid would, would uh, sometimes not check his airspeed before he put the gear down. So what he did, he, they were flying a straight in approach. And so Tommy, as they were coming in toward the um, gear extension point, Tommy puts his hand up under the uh, gear handle just to hold it to keep the kid from putting the gear handle down. I imagine the same kind of thing. So anyway, he's got his hand there, and he feels tug, tug, about 260, 250 knots. He feels tug, tug, and he says, oh, I got you. I got you. You're not going to screw me. And next thing is the light in the handle turns red, and they get the sound <laughs> of the gear coming down. And tell me, what the hell? Well, <laughs> what are you doing? The kid says, well, I'm, I'm practicing my emergency gear extension, sir. The kid thought that because the gear handle didn't come down when he wanted to put the gear down, that Tommy was uh, simulating a simulated gear failure, a gear handle extension, but whatever it was. So the guy reaches down and he pulls the emergency <laughs> gear handle extension and so Tommy's left there holding the gear handle while the gear comes out at 250 knots or whatever it was. It was above the gear extension speed. <laughs> and he says that I never felt so damn stupid in my life holding that gear handle with a red handle or e gear lever with a red light in it. He said I said, So what happened? He said, oh, he said, We went ahead and landed. I went into the ops officer, got my ass chewed and all this well the kid flunked to check the ride. Okay, good. The um, one um, experience I had that comes to mind is I was doing a formation takeoff one time, flying with Lloyd Boone. Now, Lloyd 
great student. I just really enjoyed flying with him. He always, again, another one of these highly motivated students, always prepared, just a delight to fly with. So we're on the wing very early in uh, formation phase, two ship. Gary Green was the lead um, in the lead aircraft. And Gary was uh, another IP, and I don't remember the student he was flying with, doesn't matter. Anyway, so Gary was leading, we were on the left wing, at their advance, and when we got airborne, uh, Gary called for the gear retraction. So he puts the gear up, and um, Lloyd put the gear up, and then he went full flaps in a 50 50 chance. Okay, either flaps come up or flaps go down. Well, he made the damn made the round call anyway. We're on the wing, and I'm sitting there kind of guarding the controls, you know, uh, throttles and a stick. and all of a sudden, the airplane go, does one of these numbers like that. <laughs> As the flaps came down, I'd never seen anything like that. And the thing was, it, it's so disorienting when you see something like that. Like with the check pilot that um, where the gear came out and the pitch out, or Tommy, where it came out while he's on straight-in approach, or in this case, on takeoff, the airplane does one of these numbers. Whoa! It took me a while to sort that out, but once I did, I, I reached down and grabbed the flaps and pulled them up real quick, took the airplane and pulled them up. And Gary looks right over at me, and he was a one cool customer. He said, over, over speed them, Bob? And I said, uh, yeah, we did. Okay. He said, we'll just take, bring it around and, and um, bring them back in. That's what we had to do just as a precautionary. I don't think there was any damage to it, but... Still, that's what we taught the young young kids is you have some anomaly like that, bring it back, have it looked over, and then live to fly another day. Anyway, those are just some of the uh, the brief moments of uh, what the hell did you do that for? Anyway, it all comes with the territory. Good to see everybody. Thanks for stopping in.